we're going to put this part at the front because what I want to show you is what tools did we actually use and why. So most important tool, always have an energy drink. I thought about removing this from the table, but seriously, who in their right mind would start a job without an energy drink? I did want to show how the various hardware that comes with it comes in packages that tell you what's in the package and what they're for. While that makes a lot of sense, I don't see that on most of the do-it-yourself kinds of things I put together, like IKEA kinds of stuff. I don't usually see that with. We had a little bit of leftover hardware. Um, these toggle bolts were for the purpose of holding the banister on. The kind of banister I chose was flexible plastic tubing, which I'll show you. And um, these toggles would go inside the plastic tubing. But we went with sheet metal screws for now. If those come loose, then I'll replace them with this, which is more secure but requires making a bigger hole. So we got with these uh, are coarse threaded screws that are uh, for holding down the wooden treads and deck on the platform. But I'm going to use double stick tape instead. I've used uh, heavy duty permanent indoor outdoor mounting tape for this kind of job before and been very happy with it. And I like its like slight shock absorbing qualities as well. So I'm going to use mounting tape. The reason you don't see that yet is that um, I have more coming and we're still varnishing them. Uh, these lag bolts, I believe, were for the purpose of, maybe for general purpose or maybe for holding it to the floor, but I'll show you what we used for that in a few moments. These are drawings I downloaded and I was initially critical of. These are engineering drawings that are on the website. I would not download these and print them out. They're actually not very useful. The instructions that came with the package were actually plenty clear and informative. So you don't need the ones that are on the uh, website. All right, now tools that you do have to have. Uh, this is a rubber mallet that we use for tapping things into place. Of course, multiple things we had to measure. We leveled each uh, step and we uh, made sure that the center post was a true vertical. So a level was useful for that. You're gonna want a nut driver and a half inch we wound up using for pretty much everything. So we found a half inch nut driver was pretty much what we needed everywhere. Um, also used a, a half inch ratcheted wrench. For the set screws, of which they give you an abundant supply, we used, uh, they require Allen wrenches. These set screws are what are used to hold each step in place on the central collar there. And uh, I'll show you an optional alteration I made in that right now. So, Allen wrenches for the set screws. Recall that I made a story stick for spacing the steps apart so that each space is identical. Now, initially I was going to say that drilling holes in the steel is completely optional. The instructions do not call for creating pins uh, to the central post. But I wasn't comfortable with just set screws. I felt like they might move over time. That's a kind of friction fit. So I did drill holes and use these uh, uh, 3 8 inch bolts as pins to secure the, each step. You do need good quality steel cutting blades. Uh, these are titanium and I had a number of titanium blades from Harbor Freight that didn't touch the tempered steel pole. So uh, we wound up uh, Milwaukee Red Helix turned out to be a good choice for that. Now, I was going to say that's optional and you wouldn't, if you're going to drill into steel, you don't want a battery drill for that. This is, notice this is a corded drill, which otherwise is a little on the inconvenient side. But at the very top landing, there are several places, you have to make about three or four drilled holes that aren't pre-drilled for you and that aren't optional. So you're going to need to drill some quarter inch holes. Uh, going up, or 3 8 inch holes, I should say. We didn't use the lag bolts to secure the uh, posts to the floor. We used these concrete screws because all we needed to secure it against was lateral movement, shear, and these are plenty strong enough for that. There's no tension on it and really no particular compressive forces to worry about there either. And of course, you need masonry bolts for that, or masonry uh, bits, I meant to say. And this is a Milwaukee hammer drill that 
we found made short work of the concrete floor. So that was a pretty easy task. Um, these have different names, but these corner brackets, I'll show you in a moment how I use these up at the top. These were necessary for the landing railing. And I wouldn't, they're not in the instructions, but I wouldn't call them optional. Another thing I would not call optional is you've got to have goggles when you're drilling steel and really for the masonry as well. And I found it helpful to use some cutting oil when I was drilling the steel holes. Day one of the Paragon Spiral Stair Adventure. Just arrived, just came off an 18 wheeler. And uh, luckily we have a big roll up garage door to get this thing through. It's label says it weighs 430 pounds. It's four feet wide by 40 inches. And not counting the pallet, it's 33 inches high. On the pallet, it's 39 inches high. This, I presume, is the railing. This is an inexpensive plastic railing, and I did get the economy uh, version. That's worth knowing because one of the videos that was up had a co contractor complaining that the most difficult part was the railing, that that really required two people. And that's part of the reason I decided to work with a second person today. That video is on YouTube and it's not really instructional, but he did mention that difficulty. This railing is, will be easy to flex with my hands. And so this wouldn't be the two person part of the job. It looks like it's gonna be a box of nuts and bolts. Well, yeah, have various, you know, fittings, got some rubber caps and things here. I wouldn't throw this away. I happen to have a bunch of large cardboard sheets already to use as padding on the floors to protect them. But if you don't, that's going to be useful. Check out these red oak treads. Very nice. Now I know from glancing at the instructions previously, I'm going to have to drill these uh, and screw them onto the uh, steps. Here's some joints for the central post. Pretty clear how these would work, I think. So this will be our landing platform here. Red oak matches the, uh, you know, treads that we were looking at. Very nice uh, wood and very nicely finished. Now that, of course, was the cosmetic part. This is the actual um, metal landing itself, so plenty strong. So here's our, our footing that's going to be on the floor. Now one of the things my associate pointed out to me, having done this once before, don't fasten this to the floor initially. Get everything, the post in place, threaded stuff on, and the top landing fitted in position exactly before fastening this down, or you're going to wind up drilling multiple holes at the bottom end as you get it aligned correctly. And these are the central post itself. Comes in sections for obvious reasons. This is the railing that goes around the top landing, part of the railing. the rods that are going to connect the steps vertically to one another. So these will be uh, the balustrades. See how the treads are stacked here in the box? I like that. It's a nice neat. You can clearly see what's going on. Um, this spiral stair will be at 102 inches high when it's done. Three, six, nine. And it has 10 steps plus the landing you how the steps are made. This is the integral collar which um, will thread onto that central shaft. There will be gaps between the collars. They're not held in place because they stack directly on top of each other or spacers. Rather, they'll be screwed into place. Uh, and that's so that you can move them up and down as you're threading it. Base of the pole then thread these guys onto it. Then the landing at the top, which you're gonna to attach to both the pole and your upper area and get everything exactly aligned. Then uh, build uh, from the top working down, raising the steps up one at a time to catch up with the one above, which is interesting. Uh, these are welded together. I've seen one that's made of aluminum where the pieces are cast as a single piece. This is. Uh, 
plated, or not plated, um, coated steel, powder coated steel it looks like. And then there's various cuts and fittings here. This is how we're going to attach the wooden treads. These holes right here. And these are where the uh, risers, balustrades are going to go, and so on. Well, that's a good thing about this particular learning video is that I am not a builder. I am very green in, in experience. My partner is, but I'm going to be talking things out as we go to help people like me, who, for whom this would be an upper level project. I don't think it will be. Foundation guide that is not the one I downloaded and is much more like what I was suggesting. These are all the large bits laid out. Ignore the lumber that they're sitting on top of that is not related to this project. I'm just taking advantage of that lumber to protect the floor. So all the wood you see, except for these, is unrelated to the project. Four posts for the central part and their base and three threaded connectors that are going to hold those posts together. Top tread, top landing, stair treads, stairs themselves, and uh, railing for the top landing, and the balustrades connecting the uh, stairs to each other. That's all the large bits there are. Not terribly complicated. Unboxing small bits that came with it. This is the intimidating stuff, because all these guys have to be used in some exact way. This is probably what goes into the floor, I'm guessing. You have a good view there? I just changed the camera. You want more light? Yeah, we're doing good. of something. I wonder what those mysterious two Roman screws are for. All right. Oh, it turns out I have not one but two smarter colleagues. So I'm the basically the grunt today. And so Armando is a very experienced builder. And this is Armando's son, Steve, who is hiding from the camera because he's <laughs> very shy. He's so shy. Steve, what, what, are do what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, this ladder was great, but you can't carry stuff up and down it. It doesn't look as nice in the library as the spiral staircase will. So we're upgrading that today. All right, so oh, we ladders. took down that ladder that you saw before and didn't video that because it's got nothing to do with the Paragon kit. Now, directly below where that platform is gonna be, <laughs> we started the pole here, the central pole for it, and see this base, this collar, is not fixed to the floor yet but it is held by set screws to keep it straight. And we put it on top of cardboard to protect the floor while we get everything lined up. So this is not fastened to anything yet. And it uh, looks like I need to do the set screws now too, right? Okay, this threaded collar goes on the top of the tube here. This is the first, uh, the bottom most pole, and it's threaded on the inside, and this is our male connector. Because the thread only goes down part way, this stops, it doesn't need I don't need to regulate how far in it goes, it'll just stop itself when it's in as far as it'll go. The tubes, there were four of them at 46 inches a piece. We only have to go up 102 inches, so we're not going to use all four tubes. So there's our connector from tube to tube. And by the way, a set screw would have been good here because it would keep it from turning on and the next thing. Yeah. In fact, I think I might drill and put a little screw in there for that purpose. Yeah. So we're done. Yeah. Uh. In accordance with the diagram, we're stacking the treads so that they go left to right, left to right, left to right, and that keeps the thing more balanced. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I promised that putting the treads on, the wooden uh, treads onto the metal before we do this part. But I decided to keep this lighter at this stage since it's not fast to the floor yet. We're going to have to balance it for a while while we do the upper platform. I wanted to save weight, so I'm leaving the oak treads until a later step. Okay. 
One more maybe? I think I mentioned before, it's 10 treads for 102 inches. Plus the uh, platform. Fairly high is fine by me, actually. These are these are almost high enough just stacking on each other. Eight and a half to nine and a half is what it said is desired, but normally we use a seven and a half. You like knock knock jokes? No, Okay, go ahead and start. Knock knock. Who's there? <laughs> For the manual, two ladders seems like a good idea. We'll probably going to wind up using before we're done. Okay, watch now, drop this on someone's head. Got it? I better say so far the pieces are going together really nicely. Yeah. So far. What we need to do next is get the landing on top of this post and then one more post on top of that. Then we'll raise the landing up and bolt it uh, you know, to the loft that it's going to connect to. And that will probably be the most, I think will be the most difficult single part of the project. Back into that corner. Pulling on it, so it's going to stay against that. This is kind of cut. 
Okay. Yeah. So I think we need to go. Yeah. We need to go back this way because this, this is. Yeah. Know, it, it'll this be this fine. fine. Do you want to loosen that screw? Yeah. You think it'll move it? Let me take that. Just that one out. Just, just right. back it up. Okay. So this guy needs to come down. So the job uses a lot of these scent screws, which are a 530 seconds Allen wrench. We get that these uh, balustrades, each of these is going to connect to an upper step and a lower step. And this is what holds the steps up on the outer end. But on the top step, this connects to the edge of the platform, and this connects to the top step. The platform itself is the top step, even though it's a different shape. Now, with all the other steps, there is a place for this screw to grow. go. And notice it's a slot, which allows for a little bit of vertical movement to get everything lined up right. But on the um, platform, there is not a pre-drilled hole for this. We have to actually drill the hole this is going to go into and then bolt it in place on the uh, edge of the platform there. Okay, we're closed now. And our window is going to check with our block. Okay. Let's see how close we got it. I think we're going to have to bring it down. Just a little bit. Little down by like half an inch. Uh, well, actually, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, I think I've got to take the weight off of here. Okay, okay. Do you need to adjust So it. these balustrades are actually a lot simpler than the diagram made them look. They're much, much more confusing in the diagram than they are in when you actually put them in place, they make a ton of sense how they go together. We calculated the gaps and made a um, measure block so the gaps will be the same for each step going up. So these steps are held in place by set screws onto the metal here. And I will definitely go back later and drill each one and put a bolt into the metal post. Uh, I don't feel that a set screw is even four set screws is adequate support for this over time. Okay. Um, just making sure the cat, the, what do you call these? Spindles mm -hmm. is level. Yeah, that's about good right there. All right. While it is apparently possible for one person to do this, I would strongly recommend, uh, who's ever watching this, that you have at least two people. And we found three to be helpful. This stair was fastened, 
and then I put the banister in to the outer corner of the upper stair so there's a free end hanging down. Now we'll bring the lower stair up, the next stair in sequence up, and thread it onto that banister. Uh, balustrate, I meant to say. Okay, and now bolt that in place and level it. It has two holes filled in. We're going to bring it down so that the upper hole is the one that's attached to this step. And notice it goes into a slot. This slot is smart because it does two things for us. It allows this thing to move up and down, and it also has straight sides to hold this carriage bolt. So there's not a hex or a, or a slot or anything else on the top end of this thing. It's just um, a carriage bolt that fits into a square-sided opening. All right, now we're finishing this last step here. Where's the switch? Uh, and I would remind the viewer, we have not fastened the bottom to the floor yet. We left that stage because we wanted to make sure our alignment was good. But it does mean we're going to have to drill and fasten working around the bottom of the step here. Is a, uh, the holes don't line up. So we're going to cut a piece off of that. Also, this will put metal against my tile floor. It looks like wood on the camera, but this is actually tile. So it happens that I have a, a rubber cap. This is like the end of a cane or crutch. And I'm going to put that on here after I make uh, the cut. So just wanted to point out that there is a step where you have to adapt the size of one of the pieces. You can trim. It's not required. This thing is held in place with set screws, inset Allen wrench hex screws. Um, but I didn't feel that set screws were strong enough for me to feel that was a permanent installation. So I'm drilling holes and I'm going to put bolts in there to act as pegs to reinforce the set screws. This is not required and I presume the engineers know what they're doing and I would have been fine without it, but I felt better that way. The pole appears to be good tempered steel, although I think the uh, collars are mild steel, I'm not sure. And um, I initially tried drilling for my pegs with the full-size drill bit. It's much, much easier if you go with a small one and then a big one. I realized belatedly, glasses are not enough protection for that job. I should have been wearing goggles. Please don't call my mom and tell her, okay? okay. All right, so I just used some bolts, some good-sized bolts that I have. You pick whatever size you like. And I'm not threading this onto anything on the inside. I'm just going to Loctite this. See, I'm just pushing it straight into the hole. And then I'll go back and black paint that. I'll, we'll take a picture of that and show you how that looks at the end. So this does slightly mar the finish that the factory intended. But with this painted black, I think it won't call it, uh, attention to itself. And I will feel better about the extra strength. But when we had all these treads stacked on the bottom, and then we had the platform fastened at the top, we measured the length of bare steel. And then in our case, we have 10 treads. So we divided that by 10, so 4.6 inches, and made a story block. And this block was used to space each of these as we went up to get them evenly spaced with each other. And it came out pretty much bang on, we think, yeah. So this next part, um, we're gonna use a hammer drill to anchor the post in, into the concrete. Masonry screws, they are uh, one and a quarter by a quarter. By a quarter. Uh, Left to one. the right. And, no. and we're going to do. Yeah.
Okay, these holes on these bounces are, are not big enough, so we're going to have to drill them out and make them just slightly another sixteenths bigger, so I can get these uh, sheet metal screws in to attach this. The ribbon, about. So here I go. Wrong. And that's it. Okay. I'm going to use this guy right down here. This one's got a magnet. Yeah. We're, we're uh, drilling the holes on the baluster that came with the uh, factory factory uh, drill. We're making them 3 16 to allow the sheet metal screw to go in and thus tighten down the uh, handrail. Well, we're using square drive number one screws to hold the uh, railing down. Cutting the excess. All right, so the banister is kind of interesting. It's basically a long piece of what amounts to irrigation tubing, and these vinyl end caps go on it. Now, I did opt for an economical banister. Uh, had this been a showroom or I was planning to sell the place or something, I might well have gone for a wooden banister, but it would have been a lot more work to put in place. Uh, it's just held on underneath by sheet screws, capped by this vinyl, cut off the lengths that you don't need, and Bob's your uncle. It was actually pretty easy to do. I recall that on one of the YouTubes, this was mentioned as a sticking point, but he may well have had a metal or wooden banister. So on the top landing here, there's these railings that fit on the landing like this. It turns out several modifications were needed here. The platform, I'm standing on a steel platform which is part of the spiral stair kit. It's the top landing. It is not drilled to accept these railings, so we had to drill those holes. So you will need a steel drill bit. Uh, what size would you say the hole is? Uh, 3 sixteenths. 3 sixteenths in size. And at the top end of the railing here, it doesn't fix to anything. It's freestanding, separate from the pole and separate from the other uh, guardrail, which is going to go on the, my left side. So this piece also to drill and bolt uh, is not accommodated for in the design. And then we have to join the top two corners together, which are kitty corner to each other, so a straight bolt won't go from one to the other. On my just behind me and to my left, we have to bolt this to the wall, and then where my right hand is, we have to bolt this to the central pillar. All of those requiring require drilling holes that were not part of the prefab.
All right, this is a top view of the landing, and there's a couple of things I wanted to show you. These railings come with the kit, and they go on two sides of the landing, and you can see that that's necessary pretty much no matter where you install this thing. But the railings don't have anything on the top here. They were just, they're bolted at the bottom, but they were just wobbling at the top. So I put in a corner bracket here. That's one of those brackets I showed you downstairs. And I put in another one over here to secure it to the wall. And I'm gonna put, uh, today, I'm gonna drill this hole and put a bolt through to hold the top of the railing to the center post. And that will create a very strong frame around here. Incidentally, this little landing up at the top here is absolutely perfect if you like to stand around and mansplain things to other people. So this is my pontificating platform here uh, as well. These railings bolt to the landing and they, they bolt fine, they're nice and secure. But the holes are not pre-drilled for them. We had to drill those. And um, this railing, your intuition would be that the corner of this railing is gonna square up to the corner of this railing. But because of the way that these flanges bolt on, you can't do that. You have to actually move them apart a little bit, which means we've created a fairly large gap here and it's not exactly symmetrical how these railings fit at this corner. Those are some slight design changes that I would make. But I would like to emphasize, I found the kit to be easy to build, uh, straightforward and comprehensible, and I definitely would recommend this, especially as value for the money. So um, I don't want to give the impression that I don't like the design of these stairs. I think it's actually terrific. My uh, beautiful assistant has put eight coats of uh, polyethylene varnish, uh, preserving the natural wood finish, which I like quite a lot. And you can see that I've applied double stick mounting tape to the underside of each wooden tread. This needs to be construction grade mounting tape, indoor, outdoor construction grade mounting tape. This creates a very permanent attachment. The reason I like it is it has a slight shock absorbing quality and uh, there's no shift or wiggle screws don't cause splits, you know, it doesn't like screws cause splits in wood, things like that. And I actually think it's faster and easier to work with. I'll let you watch this one in a second. So this is now a very sticky surface. So I'm kind of using this box knife as a fingernail and trying to get between the red and the rubber. Right. So now we have the tape ready to go and we're going to walk over and position this. This morning I washed each of these metal treads with um, Windex so that it wouldn't leave any residue. Now I'm going to put the tread on and here I have a choice. I can leave a slight gap toward the pole or a slight gap toward the uh, balusters, balusters. And I moved them out toward the balusters uh, on the theory that that actually creates a more even margin around it because there's going to be a little edge anyway beyond the balusters and also because your feet are more likely to make contact with the outer part of the tread than the inner part of the tread. So I get that centered as well as I can and then just gently lower it down while pressing against the balusters to keep my uh, orientation from shifting. And now it's not only permissible but desirable to walk on this. There's no cure time, there's no waiting for anything, this is ready to go. So notice that we've been working from the bottom to the top. So as I put each wooden tread on, I can walk on that to work on the next one and that keeps my surfaces clean. Also, it's very good for these treads to walk on them right away. The second you put them in place, assuming they're positioned well, uh, walking on them is how you uh, stick them down more permanently. Pressing against the outer balustrades, which will leave a little gap on the inner side near the uh, uh, center post. And that also allows me to center it much, much better than if I start on the inside. Okay, press it down and stomp it in place. The location of this spiral stair is such that it's in the middle of a, an area where people walk back and forth. And so I thought there was a little bit of a chance of people snagging these corners. So I got these corner protectors from Amazon. So in, for, it's set up so that you could do more than one side, but you just need the one uh, large flat corner. Press that into place. Remember, I had just cleaned this with um, 
Windex so that there wouldn't be residue. I did a cutout around the bolt head using a standard box knife and it turned out to make a clean, easy cut. This is the, the landing platform, uh, second to last piece to go on. And I want to call your attention to these routed corners. This is something we had to do because of the way that these um, tabs are elevated in the corners, spacing them a little further from the corners somehow. And pre-drilling would have been nice there too. We had to drill holes for those. Three corners are routed, so I want to turn it to make sure that the three routed corners align where they're supposed to be. Putting it in on its edge allows me to position it without prematurely sticking it down. And see why I like working with that tape. It's super easy to do. Now, this did not come with it, but I have a little bit of a kick here and just a little bit of a step up the width of the um, oak itself. So we're going to put a little threshold here. Arguably, we could have avoided this step by setting that thing uh, three quarters of an inch lower than we did. So that was a choice we made that had the consequence of requiring a threshold. I wouldn't call it a failure of the kit. All right, this has been a three and a half men production. Uh, all, total working time with two professionals, one rank amateur and a kid was <laughs> six hours and we weren't hurrying. Some of that time went into modifying the upper attachment, which is going to vary from one location to another. <coughs> but I would say if you have two or three people who know what they're doing, six hours is a reasonable estimate Boy, for this easy, job. Easy.